Hi, this is the second part of the recommendations for crypto beginners. This video is about security, cybersecurity and financial security. I'm Alexey Konosevich and you're watching Blockchain State. I learned most of the following recommendations because of mistakes I made in dealing with cryptocurrency since 2014. Recommendation 1. Nobody should know that you have cryptocurrency. This is just common sense and something that many people normally do with their values. You shouldn't be talking about keeping large amounts of cash at home, even if you store money in a safe. The best preventive tactic is not to give attackers a reason. A significant proportion of attacks are targeted when the intruder knows that the victim has cryptocurrency. Many attacks occur through social and physical interaction, not remotely online as you may think. Another important reason why you don't want to tell anyone that you have crypto is that banks don't like clients with crypto. If your bank becomes aware you're buying and selling, there are high chances that they will shut down your account. And it happens much more often than you can think. I have a friend who is an Australian accountant. Such stories happen with her clients all the time. She not only recommends all her clients keep it secret, but she also keeps it secret from her bank that she is providing accounting services for clients with crypto, because if the bank sees all her clients, it will jeopardize them and her business. And they are not doing anything illegal, they just buying crypto. Debanking is happening all over the world. I have friends in many countries, I hear these stories from everywhere. Even if you're not doing anything illegal but just buying and selling crypto and even paying taxes anyway, be ready to become a crypto partisan. Recommendation 2. Don't keep your crypto in exchanges. Troubles with exchanges happen all the time. They could go bankrupt or get hacked. I don't want to count how often it happens. During the last few years, I don't remember a month when there were no scandals somewhere in the world. Look at these statistics. 12 billion dollars were lost during the last 10 years as a result of theft and fraud. Sometimes the owners of crypto exchanges are suspected of being involved in stealing from their clients. It is such an easy way to get rich in a second. You just drain an address of the exchange you run and tell everyone you've been hacked and then disappear in the blue. Exchanges in many countries have no licenses and don't need to. Funds are not insured. To deeply understand why crypto exchange is a permanent threat to your funds, you have to refer to the blockchain technology itself. When you store your coins on an exchange, even though you have your account and passwords, legally you own these coins, but physically you don't control them. They are stored at the exchange's address. Watch this video if you don't know what a crypto address is. Who owns the private key of the address is the master of coins. So the best way to secure your funds is to store them on your own crypto wallet. No authorities, no bank, no exchange can take it from you. They can't block your crypto account when it is in your wallet. We will talk about it in a moment. So crypto exchange must be just a temporary intermediary where you buy and sell but store coins on your crypto wallets. Another reason why you don't want to keep substantial values on an exchange is that they love to block funds on the grounds of due diligence, fighting with money laundering and financing terrorism. I heard hundreds of stories where normal people, not criminals, couldn't get their funds back. One of such stories happened to my friend. I helped him to release his cryptocurrency from an exchange. You can watch this story in one of my previous videos. The link to it is down below. The safest strategy is to withdraw crypto and cash in smaller portions. It is better to read through their policy first. 
and read what people say on forums. But I would say that a safer strategy is up to 10,000 US dollars per withdrawal. For larger amounts, I highly suggest hiring a professional, not just any financial advisor or an accountant, but those who work in crypto and fintech. They usually know which banks are more friendly, which crypto exchange causes more troubles to clients. Sometimes you will need to commit an OTC transaction over the counter means without involving a crypto exchange or even without a bank. But this is a topic for another video. Recommendation 3. Always enable at least two-factor authentication on crypto exchanges. It is better to use multi-factor authentication. For example, you can add Google 2FA and email confirmation for withdrawal in many crypto exchanges. I know how annoying it is, but believe me, people think that their accounts will not be hacked, but it happens all the time. I myself was hacked. I had to learn this lesson through the bitterness of loss. Be smarter and learn from someone's mistakes, not yours. Recommendation 4. Use software or hardware wallets. Alright, when you know that crypto exchange is not the best place to keep your crypto, where do you want to store it and how? There are generally two options. Software wallet. You go on the official community website of the cryptocurrency you want to deal with and download the wallet uh, on your computer or smartphone. You don't want to use a web online cryptocurrency wallet for the same reason as the crypto exchange. If you don't own the private key, you don't own your crypto. Among all options, a hardware device can ensure the highest level of protection. It is a dedicated pocket device for cryptocurrency with layers of protection. They have a so-called crypto processor. The basic principle of such a device is that it keeps the private key in protected hardware, so the key never leaves the device. To sign a transaction, the computer sends it to the device. The device internally performs all cryptographic functions and returns only the result to the computer. That is why it's not possible to steal the private key. And if someone physically steals the hardware wallet, it is still protected with your password. Most of the devices also have a hidden layer an address that can be revealed as your main address. Assuming that someone kidnapped you and tortured to get your password, you can give them the password from this address, not the main one. Well, to make it work, you still need to keep some coins there. So they will take these coins, but not the coins from the main address. It is called plausible deniability. Recommendation 5. Keep your seed phrase safe. Okay, this is probably one of the most important parts of your cybersecurity. You see, the private key is something that you don't usually see. The first thing a wallet application will ask you when you install it on your computer is whether you want to encrypt, protect your private key. And here is how it works. Here is your private key with the public key it forms an asymmetric cryptographic pair. Public key is used as an address where coins are stored. The private key is used to sign transactions. If it gets exposed, you lose your funds. That is why the best strategy is to encrypt the private key with a symmetric password. If you don't know what symmetric and asymmetric cryptography means, watch this video. But here is the problem. If you lose the private key or lose the password from it, that's it. For example, you lose your smartphone or your PC gets broken. There are no administrators on the blockchain and nobody is able to recover your private key or your password to it. There is no one who can help you if you lose it. You lose your key, you lose your money. So how can you protect yourself from it? There is a method of seed phrase. It's, it's a backup phrase also known as magic phrase or mnemonic phrase that consists of at least 12 short words. It is designed in such a way 
that if you lose your private key or password from it, you will be able to reinstall it with the seed phrase. By the way, your wallet keeps a lot of private keys for the reasons of anonymity. So seed is even more important than your private key per se, because private keys are made of the seed. So literally it's your backup. So when you first create your wallet, the system will ask you if you want to create your seed phrase or to reinstall your wallet, the system will ask if you want to use your seed to restore your wallet. You can use one wallet, if you don't like it, install another one, but use the same seed phrase. One thing though, because there are many standards of seed phrases, you need to make sure you know which standard you use and this, another wallet, supports it. The most important part of this story is how you store your seed phrase. Because you don't want anyone to see it and you don't want to lose it. Once it's lost and you lose access to your wallet, again, that's it. You lose your crypto. So it's not a good idea to store it online. You can store it on paper. Just write it in a notepad and make sure you make no mistakes. But paper is a fragile medium as well. It can get wet, it won't survive in a fire, the ink can fade. So the ultimate solution will be engraved on a piece of metal. More so, you can't give it to someone to do because you will expose your seed. There are several solutions on the market. This or this and some others. I'm not promoting anything, you can search it online. I actually designed my own solution, an opening badge. Of course, you don't need to wear it, you just need to keep it safe. Your seed phrase will be on the internal sides of the metal plates, which you engrave yourself with a center punch. The external side of the badge will be pre-engraved with an image, a photo of your love or your blood type, whatever you want. So it will play the role of camouflage. So even if you need to take it with you somewhere, by wearing it on your neck, you won't attract a lot of attention. Imagine you keep one of such plates that I showed. Uh, for example, when you pass security in an airport, it will attract attention. Your seat will be exposed if the security officer asks you to show what the heck is it. There are CCTV cameras everywhere. Say goodbye to your crypto. If you think that you can leave it in your luggage, no. It also gets through security and you won't even know if you got exposed. Or they can lose your luggage. It happens all the time. This badge is not in production yet, but if you follow this link, you will be able to know when it is available for purchase. So like I said, welcome to the world of crypto partisans. If you're making substantial investments into crypto, you will need all these measures to keep it safe for a lifetime. You also need to instruct your partner or someone close to you what to do if something happens to you. If you are not sure that you can accurately ensure all these measures, you need professional custodial services. Of course, it costs a lot, but it can be worth the value of your investments. If you rely on yourself, some other common sense measures should be followed. Installing an antivirus app and enabling network protection on your PC. Don't use the same password and always use multi-factor authentication on your crypto exchange and email that you linked to this exchange. That's it for today. Stay safe, keep your crypto safe and as crypto people say, in blockchain we trust. If you like the video, hit like and subscribe. It helps a lot to develop this channel. Thank you. See you in the next video. Which crypto exchanges causes more troubles to clients? Some they know.